Gaines parlait des esprits animaux. Gaines talked about the uh, animal minds of the financial world. Well, we must tame those animal minds to reorient our investments. The investments we need to perform a low carbon transition. We have to act on infrastructures uh, and uh, material transformation. We're not, not really talking about additional expenses. Take a clean technology that is 30% more expensive than a, uh, an emitting technology. It's not the 30 that matters. The 130 that needs to be reoriented. There will be 0.5% of the world GDP in additional costs. But what matters is the redirection on 2% of the uh, world GDP, meaning that we need to reorient approximately 10% of the cash flow generation on, or else the world uh, investments. It is feasible, but we have to change the way economic players gamble on the future. Large companies, you and I, when we think about the investments that, that we need to make to save energy in our houses and uh, flats. The article number two in the Paris Agreement highlights the necessity to make the financial flows compatible with our objectives. So what we could think that what matters are carbon prices, which are adequately steered on an upward trend. However, there is a limit. These prices will propagate to the whole economy if applied in a rather brutal way. This will uh, decrease the value of uh, low carbon assets, and the redistributing effect will be difficult to control. I'll give you an example. If the price of the uh, of carbon doubles the price of concrete in India, the 50 euros additional cost will slow down the open dynamic in the country, and the country will be locked in in a situation where it will depend on fossil fuels. So carbon prices are necessary. However, they can only increase following the pace at which each country will insert them into significant reforms in terms of taxes and public uh, policy that need to be reformed. We cannot decide today that we're going to find carbon prices that will be sufficient to fuel transition. We have to act on other parameters, and one of those is, fun is funding, finances. Okay, it's all very well, but we find ourselves in a difficult situation. We talk about world economy and debtedness, and this is precisely what leads to unemployment and the difficulty for some countries to have stable growth. We are the victims of what McCartney calls uh, the tragedy of the horizon. There, is a, there are savings across the world, and people are managing the savings, and usually those people are financial intermediaries. Companies and these intermediates are reluctant to invest on the long term because, for a very simple reason, they must be liquid. They have to be able to give back the money that they have been entrusted with. So they don't want to invest on long-term assets or illiquid assets. The only long-term investment that are made are real estate and land. And in the industrial world, we find ourselves in the same situation as Spuridon's donkey, the donkey who finds himself between oats and water and cannot decide whether he is more thirsty than hungry, and he hesitates for so long that he actually starves and dies. So how can we reduce mitigate the uh, difficulty uh, in uh, long-term investment? Don't worry about this graph. Some of you might be scared by this graph, but it's actually m simpler than it uh, seems. There are two projects, Project A and Project B. Initially, when a project is funded, money must be put on the table, money must be invested, and uh, initially the uh, curve is negative. But after some time, you expect a benefit. and. Uh, the curve will go above the uh, the line. Project A requires more investment than Project B, but the benefit will be greater as well. And if you can save on emissions and you uh, gain a carbon tax, then the uh, Project A will be even more positive, except that it might not be chosen for a simple reason. If you make a mistake with Project B, all you lose is money. With Project A, if a mistake is made, then we cross a line of invisible dangers. And beyond this line, the bank will not 
agree to give you additional credits or will give you credits at very, very high interest rates. And then the shareholders will start thinking, you have taken too many risks and they will leave you and invest in a different type of industry or in a different type of company. So you as an entrepreneur risk being bought by a bigger financial company in a more or less uh, friendly uh, bid. Therefore, in a world where value for shareholders matters a lot in the company management, decision makers are reluctant to invest in technologies that are considered as too capitalistic and require a very high investment. So we need to lower the uh, investment threshold, this line. We must move it downwards. I'll give you a very trivial example. If uh, for an investment project of 200,000 euros, if you invest 100,000 and you need an additional 100,000 credit, uh, the bank thinks it's too dangerous. Now, if you benefit from a public guarantee for 50,000 euros and uh, this guarantee can be reimbursed in the form of carbon certificates, showing that the project actually went to fruition, then in that case, the banks only need to lend you 50,000 euros and the risk becomes acceptable for them. This means that you have managed to reduce your investment risk. In the meantime, in the process, liquidities uh, have been, have been uh, issued and the uh, carbon certificates uh, will be given back to the central banks in the form of assets. Uh, the central banks will consider them as assets thanks to the public guarantee that supports them. And so they become an asset uh, the same way that gold or dollar would be an asset. We hear a lot about the work conducted by UNEP or the G20 advo advocating for uh, rules to inform shareholders uh, on the content, uh, carbon content of their portfolio. This could encourage citizen movements and actions to move away from some portfolios that are not sufficiently invested in uh, carbon. But this is not sufficient. The number of uh, projects that can be uh, funded uh, with clean technology is going to make the difference. And that's why we need the public guarantees that I just mentioned. Financial intermediaries, uh, pension funds, banking institutions, insurances could issue triple A, triple A carbon uh, bonds, triple A because they are based on public guarantees. However, this means that we need to measure carbon and we also must agree on the value given to uh, the uh, bonds uh, issued and the emissions that we have saved. Article 108 in the Paris Agreement encourages to uh, acknowledge a uh, social value for mitigation activities. It provides a sort of uh, price to be adapted to all financial systems as a symbol of a recognized value, an acknowledged value on the global level. So. The climate finance would be a good way to rethink climate policies, showing that long-term uh, caring about long-term helps uh, mitigate uh, tensions. We decrease the uh, risk coefficient, and it's all the more important in developing countries because Thanks to this new system, they will be able to reorient their investments towards their infrastructures rather than fighting almost in a deadly race for exports. This race is lethal for them and dangerous for us. Something else which is also essential. Any action towards low carbon economies is a way to encourage peace across the world because it decreases our dependency towards uh, fossil fuels, oil and gas, which cause uh, wars and uh, dangers uh, and tensions uh, very often lethal and dangerous across the world.